this is Dr. Ken. I wanted to talk a little bit about biomechanics, uh, especially in regards to pull. And so it's not necessarily related directly to technique, but a lot of times it crosses over into good technique. Um, however, there are times when we talk about technique in pull where the proper technique is not actually good for the biomechanics of the body. And so having an understanding of the difference between those things, knowing what the cost benefit is, um, and what the compromises uh, on our systems are uh, in the long term. Let's actually, let's go into an example. Uh, half flag. Half flag is a good one. Basically two methods. Um, both are useful for different techniques, but one of them is a straight arm, and the other is a bent arm with it into the stomach. Okay? Each provides different opportunities and different transitions, and there's different reasons for them. But what I want to talk about in particular, though, is that if this arm is straight here, and we have a force going in here due to catching, uh, a lot of times people, when they're learning uh, fonji or anything, descending like a shoulder flip, and they catch in this half flag position, and they're in the habit of using this straight arm position, which is beside the pole rather than into the gut, that means the body will be swinging into the arm here. Boom. And it shouldn't be taking a lot of force, but even if it's just a little bit of force and you do it a lot, over time, it can lead to certain consequences. The elbow bends in this way, okay? Right? If we apply a force here, as in catching into the arm, okay? So we're now applying a medial to lateral force. That's kind of causing a shearing of the elbow. You got the radius, you got the ulna, and you got the humerus, okay? The ulna, it's this bone that hooks in right here, and it sits in a groove that's very stable, just like this, boom. When you begin to apply forces on a joint that the direction is not uh, best suited for the joint, the joint's not supposed to move that direction, it can wear and tear on the ligaments that support and stabilize that joint. Even if it's useful for the pull technique, it may not be good for the body long term. Which kind of brings us to the next point. Pain. Pain is not a good indicator. Very frequently you'll have long term damage before you feel anything. When we feel irritation in the system, that irritation is like a just nagging information that the body determines over time that it's not really useful. So it ignores it. If that irritation continues and grows stronger and stronger, at some point it reaches a certain threshold. If the pain passes that threshold, then the body goes alarm. Now we're doing damage. Don't allow any more activity to happen around there, let it heal. And so that's why we can't really necessarily trust pain because damage could be happening over a period of time. There's even parts of the body that don't even have nerves for pain. You could do damage, significant damage to them and feel nothing. Listen to pain, but especially when we're talking about pull, I mean, pull, <laughs> it hurts. Half the techniques that we do, if not more, have a certain amount of pain to them. And so we have to recognize what is good pain and what is bad pain, what is normal pain and what is not. And Wolf's Law is that bone will change shape based, based on the stresses applied to it. Literally reform and reshape over time. And it takes a long time for most things unless it's traumatic, like a bone break, but uh, you could have adaptations to your biomechanics that have begun years, even decades ago. And so it's really hard to trust that you're not doing something wrong or something damaging just because, again, the pain thing. But you may be used to a certain movement pattern and it may feel natural to you, but it may actually be poor biomechanics. The uh, half flag that we're using as an example, your bone could actually start to bend over time. And then the elbow won't move in the normal direction that it should. And then in the long term, it can lead to degeneration because if you use something in a way that it wasn't meant to be used I mean things happen things start to break down unfortunately we don't have so easily replaceable body parts sure there's surgically some options but and I'm gonna actually say inferior to 
the natural system of what you already have. So we want to preserve our bodies as much as possible for long-term use. Let's come back to that half flag. If you are going to be dealing with forces that come into the pole, right, my recommendation is to catch here with the elbow underneath the belly button or beside it. Okay, it kind of depends on your body type, your arm length, um, your personal mechanics to determine exactly where that is. But you want to try to bring the elbow nice and deep into the lower stomach area, this quadrant. If you are pressing, if you're pushing, if you're swinging or spinning around the pole, such as anything going in these directions, it doesn't matter so much. You can have the straight arm. And I know I'm gonna oppose a lot of well-established uh, instructors out there with this uh, philosophy, with this stance. Some people really do believe that you should always catch with the straight arm. Or some people say you should always push through here and catch through here. The proper technique really does depend on what you are doing. And sure, you could do the half flag with the straight arm with a catching force coming in like this in a way that uh, reduces the amount of damage. For instance, if I'm swinging into the pole here and I know that the amount of force is going to transition into the elbow, I can release pressure on this hand and I can put more pressure in my upper arm. That is an option. Nothing I'm saying is an absolute rule, but it's good to keep in mind. Just be very aware of the mechanics of the elbow. The way it bends is not this way, like back and forth, if, like a hinge this way, okay? It bends this way, that I frequently teach to my students. And unfortunately, it is actually quite a bit more difficult to accomplish. However, it is um, more ideal in my book especially a swing half flat, is to transition from a bent elbow position to a straight arm position and then to catch back into a bent arm position. Elbows into the gut, swing the legs. When I do the back swing, I try to transition into the straight arm technique. So I'm here, and straight arm, boom, and catch. Straight arm. I'm maximizing the ability to catch and absorb the force in a good position for my mechanics, okay? And we're, we're not even discussing the wrist and the shoulder at this point. When I do the back swing and I have no weight on that arm, it, as I straighten and push, I get to fulfill the need for a larger range of motion, especially when I'm pressing up. However, the catch means that I need to transition back in. And that's particularly hard because people, as they're pushing through this arm, they're putting weight into it. For proper technique, right, you're using the armpit, the upper armpit, a lot. So even though you're pushing through it, you're still locking in that armpit, this upper armpit, quite a bit. Boom. So even though I'm pushing and straightening through the arm, this is squeezing particularly hard, okay? Which allows me to get up and allows me to transition back to the gut because there isn't that much weight on this. There's this, right? And then I straighten. In the future, we're gonna talk a little bit about like knees, we'll talk about shoulders, wrists, we'll talk about maybe a kinematic chain, we'll talk about how the elbow and the wrist and the shoulder may all connect and change the technique as well. Nothing I'm saying is meant to be a diagnosis, it's not meant to be a treatment, it's not supposed to be specific to your medical condition, and you do have to speak with both your coach, your doctors, your healthcare provider, whatever group of people that you have around you that you trust, and you should have a group of people that you trust around you. Speak to them about all these matters before you make any adjustments of your own. In general, you'll see me not condemn any particular technique. There's a time and a place for just about everything. I definitely want to talk about leg hangs. It's proper technique of a leg hang is not necessarily good biomechanics for your body. I want to thank Lupit Pole for sponsoring these videos. Lupit Pole is continuing to push the standards of pull up with improving the equipment, improving the safety. And so that's kind of why they're backing these videos. So big thanks to them. You can go to their website and use the code NINJA5 for a 5% discount. And otherwise, I hope you continue to follow this series.